Joining me right now is Florida Congressman. He is member of the House Ways and Means Committee and member of the House Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, Greg Stubbe. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. I want to yeah, first say I'm so happy to see you back at it. Uh, oh, I know you had that bad accident. How are you doing? How's your recovery going? Doing great. Uh, unfortunately, I can't fly still because of the blood that's in my lungs, but uh, that should be in March. So I should be back in Washington uh, mid to end of March. And I look forward to getting back to the committee work and certainly on the select committee weaponization and the Ways and Co Means Committee. We've got a lot of work that we need to do, and I'm looking forward to getting back to D.C. Well, I was following you on Twitter, and I was so horrified with what happened. Can you tell us a little about what happened? Yeah, I was working on, you know, we're still dealing with the aftermaths of Ian down here in southwest Florida. I still have, you know, limbs and that sort of thing down. And I was uh, uh, trimming a very large limb on an oak tree. I was about 25 feet up on an extension ladder with a chainsaw. And uh, the limb broke loose, hit the uh, extension ladder, pushed, flipped me up into the air, and I fell about 25 feet. Uh, I had a concussion. I tore the ligaments in my neck. I got a contusion in my lungs, the blood clotting in my lungs, which is why I can't fly. And I cracked my pelvis. Uh, so I'm still not weight bearing on my right side because that crack in my pelvis is, is healing. And uh, but everything else is I'm doing better. The docs will clear me to fly uh, like after that first week of March. Oh, Congressman, I am so sorry to hear all of this. We are all praying for your strength and your recovery. You. I'm so happy you're back here with me talking about your work, which I know you love. Give us your reaction, first off, to what we're seeing at the border. What, I, I, look, I have been told for years that the CCP has abused our visa process. Uh, the student visa process has been abused. They send people in there so that they can into America so that they can steal intellectual property and send it back to Beijing. So why would they need people at the wide open southern border? And are they anonymous now? Are they wanting people to be, quote unquote, the enemy within just in case a military conflict unfolds between the U.S. and China? Uh, your thoughts on the Rio sector uh, really unleashing up to 30 Chinese nationals into the country every day. That's just the Rio Grande Valley. Every day. Yeah, my response is outrage. As a guy who served in the military and served in Operation Iraqi Freedom to defend our country against all enemies, uh, we have an administration that doesn't care that our enemies are, you know, shooting balloons and surveilling our nuclear sites, are bringing in their own Chinese Communist Party nationals into our southern border. I've been saying for over two years now that we have an invasion at our southern border, and that's exactly what's going on. And we have an administration that is completely ignoring current law, simply giving them a notice to appear, which you know that they're not responding to or showing up for, and then refusing to go in and get to these individuals after they've been deported because their amnesty claims are bogus. Uh, it's, yeah. It absolutely is beyond the pale. Uh, it's, it's surprising to me that Democrats are okay with compromising our national security all in the name of politicization. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, I'd like to hear more from the Democrats. You make a great point. But, Congressman, I don't understand why it feels like Joe Biden is constantly on his heels, like apologizing to communist China. I mean, yesterday, the president finally broke his silence on these three unidentified objects shot down last weekend. And here again, we look so stupid. We have no idea where they are. They, they appeared that they're not uh, connected to China. But how dumb do we look by this comment? Watch this. I want to be clear. We don't have any evidence that there has been a sudden increase in the number of objects in the sky. We're now just seeing more of them partially because the steps we've taken to increase our radars, to narrow our radars. And we have to keep adapting our approach to uh, delaying, to dealing with these challenges. So uh, th these three had nothing to do with China, he claims, but we shot them down anyway. Florida Senator Marco Rubio tweeted this. Anyone in the administration or Congress who suggests it was not intentional is either a fool or a liar or a CCP apologist. He's talking about the larger uh, spy balloon that was able to travel the country for a week. California Congressman Darrell Issa also tweeted this. A military officer reached out to me tonight. Biden's speech on the balloon was all lies. Congressman, your reaction. Yep. Well, they've been, he's been lying to the American people ever since and before he got elected president, and they've gotten away with it because the mainstream media doesn't hold him to account for their words that are completely false to the American people. Uh, he allowed a Chinese Communist Party surveillance balloon that the payload was 90 feet long. I mean, think of how big that is. 
there's some ho most houses aren't 90 feet long um, that surveilled nuclear sites, B-2 bomber sites, went all the way across the country. And one of the frustrating things, when we had a briefing this past week or this week uh, for members of Congress, they told us that they knew about it on January 27th. It was confirmed on January 28th. They notified the Joint Chief of Staff uh, on that day, on the 28th. The, the president, uh, of course, there's some confusion here, but was notified for sure on the 31st. And then by the 4th was when they shot it down. So like eight days goes by while they're surveilling, the Chinese Communist Party surveilling our country and our nuclear sites and our B-2s, and they don't shoot it down until it's already done all of its reconnaissance. The bottom line is Joe Biden is compromised. His family is compromised because the Chinese Communist Party has given his family millions and millions of dollars, and he's compromised. And it's, it's so clear and apparent to the American people. I mean, how much more damage can the CCP do to America with no repercussions? They unleashed a virus that killed one million Americans, and then they covered it yep. up. They still won't allow an investigation into the origins of COVID-19 in that Wuhan lab, and it seems like Joe Biden is okay with that. He is okay with it, because at the end of the day, he doesn't care about the American people. He cares about his family making money, and he can't wow. compromise the relationships that he has with the Chinese Communist Party, which is evident in all of the evidence that we've seen in the laptop with Hunter Biden, with te actual testimony um, from guys like Bob Alinsky, who said that he was the big guy that was getting that 10 percent. So he's compromised. So he's going to allow the Chinese Communist Party to do whatever they want and then lie to the American people about what's actually happening. Well, this is so incredibly disturbing. Where is the media is. on this? This is disgusting. Uh, aside from a few of us, no one's covering an, a, a compromised uh, influence peddling operation in the White House. Congressman, thanks very much. We certainly will keep a spotlight on it.